This is a short version of a talk I gave at the PTTC workshop in June 2011 in Houston. My talk was about mobile geocomputing in oil and gas. So until quite recently I was a an iPhone user, I loved my iPhone, which is fantastic, they're amazing devices. Then I got this Android phone and I've been having a lot of fun with it, not so much because of the phone but because of some of the things I can do with it and in particular, I've been using App Inventor to build some apps, sort of like science-y calculators and things for my phone. There's an example of one of them that literally just took a, f a few days to make. I think I had this version of it running um, with, within a week or so. It was very exciting for me. I felt really liberated by, um, by this tool, so I want to tell you a bit about it. So what's so great about mobile devices? Well, of course, you have them everywhere you go. They're getting very powerful, they're relatively cheap now, they're fun to use, um, tactile, you tend to talk to people about them, they're interesting to, to share and pass around. And there's very rapid advances in what's pretty amazing technology. Now, maybe that's a problem if you're a developer, and there's other problems too that some people have with these things. You know, they're lightweight, they're not very business-like, they're not for real science. Uh, there's too many of them to support and develop, um, uh, and so on. But they're so ubiquitous, so inexpensive, and so much fun that I think that they're going to be around. So I, for one, really want to see what, what happens if you take them seriously. Um, and there's every reason to take them seriously. Uh, there's a teardown of the phone I have, a Nexus S. Um, this teardown's from ifixit.com. And it's really just to illustrate how many incredible little devices um, and sensors, for example, there are in here. Nine or ten different sensors. The CCD sensor, the light sensors, go right into the infrared. There's all sorts of interesting possibilities uh, there. And, of course, there's radio receivers, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, um, all sorts of exciting things. Full GPS, which you can interact with in App Inventor. Um, you can interact with all these aspects, really. The accelerometer, for example, gyroscope, compass. And they have pretty amazing little um, CPUs as well. This one's an A8. Uh, it's a multi-core CPU, it essentially has two cores. I think the iPad 2 has a four-core CPU, the A9 uh, processor. And these things are getting fairly fast. This is, um, so not everyone buys into these sorts of statistics, which is fair enough, but you know, maybe they're interesting to see over time or for comparison's sake. Uh, my iMac does sort of, I don't know, 20, 30, maybe 40 gigaflops. And I think these devices, uh, I've, I've plotted some um, mobile chip performance in red here. The first three points are real points and the last three points are total wild speculation of me just <laughs> projecting into the future. But it looks like, you know, maybe around the end of next year we might be into gigaflops with with these devices, which is, which is pretty amazing that really already you probably have something equivalent to a supercomputer from 1980 uh, in, in terms of compute um, power in your in your cell phone. And of course, the screens are important too. Um, uh, this m m my phone has a I think it's an 800 by 480 screen. The iPad uh, is quite a bit bigger. I think it's uh, 1024 by um, 800 and something. I can't remember exactly. Um, some people think the iPad 3, probably out next year or certainly within 18 months, uh, is going to have a more monitor like. A, literally like a 24 inch monitor sized screen in terms of pixels because it'll still be the 10 inch uh, display um, but that it's going to be up in the sort of 2048 by 1536 realm and now once you've got that kind of processing power and that kind of um, display I think you can think about doing some real science on these things and indeed some of the apps out there right now are highly technical or sort of really te technologically advanced doing things like sign uh, interpretation from language to language on the fly right in the camera like a sort of augmented reality engine um, or reverse video lookup where you can just point the phone at some video and it finds what it is on the internet. Wolfram Alpha, MATLAB have interfaces for these uh, for iPhone and, and I think in Wolfram Alpha's case Android as well. Um, you know, so there are tools there to do science. Now, in MATLAB's case, it's not actually running on the phone, it's running on your workstation. Um, but still, I think it's a, it's a valid and real tool. 
And there's some really geeky stuff out there, of course. Some, you know, first thing you get is a sort of Commodore 64 emulator or an HP 48 calculator, which is cool. You know, those are fun. And then there's this thing called scripting layer for Android, where you can actually write, say, Perl scripts or Python scripts right on your phone to interact with the phone, with the sensors. And um, if you kind of live on the command line, all the tools are there right now for you to uh, excuse me, start sort of hacking on these things and uh, being creative. And that's the kind of thing that people are getting up to. For example, sending phones into space. Uh, this chap, Danny Peer, had a, a project on Kickstarter uh, and, and raised the money to build a, uh, a little um, <laughs> project. I guess he was using a helium balloon to send a phone into space. A team from Google did the same thing in December. And, you know, you can interact with the GPS, of course, with all the sensors, take photographs, take video in space. Totally awesome. So what, what is Android? Well, um, here's a, a sort of component diagram, I suppose, for the operating system. Um, Linux kernel, uh, of course, that's licensed in, under the GPL version 2. And then built on top of that is an Apache licensed component. That, those green blocks there and the application framework that's provided by Google as part of the operating system. Um, everything from the application framework up, so all apps for example, is in Java. Um, now I'm using App Inventor to make my Java. I never actually get to see or interact with the Java itself. Um, but that's how that works. Now the programs can be licensed any way you like, just like uh, normal uh, software. People are building these open source frameworks for building apps. Uh, these are relying on things like, as well, well, things like HTML5 and JavaScript to try and um, free them from uh, device dependence. So these open source frameworks can be used to build things on a sort of cross platforms: iOS, Android, BlackBerry, even. Now there are open source apps out there. Here's one for iPad called Molecules. Uh, there's another one there for Android. And these things are hosted on SVN, GitHub, and so on, just like regular software. Now, I've started a list at agileinterpretation.com in our wiki. I uh, tried to just collect some uh, apps that we know about for Android and for iOS um, that are for doing geology and geophysics. If you know of any, please go along and add them. It's a wiki. I'd love for you to um, make that list even better for other people. So where's all this come from? Well. Uh, Android came out of Hal Arbelson's, uh, I think he was on secondment from MIT Media Lab to Google a, a, a year or two ago and essentially helped them build App Inventor. Uh, now, App Inventor is a blocked, uh, sort of block based visual programming language. Uh, it's got its heritage in open blocks, I think it's called basically uh, a, a visual implementation of Star Logo, which is a, a programming language out of MIT Media Lab. Um, another manifestation of this is a MIT Scratch, which you can go download and play with. It's a really cool um, tool for kids to learn how to program uh, and a lot of fun to play with. You can build games and so on. So what does App Inventor look like? Well, it, it all lives in the cloud, so everything runs in your browser. Um, here's appinventor.googlelabs.com. If you've already got a Google um, account. You can just go there, start using it right away. Um, this piece here is the component viewer. So you, essentially you're building a GUI by adding components and the components have properties uh, which you see in the blocks editor, which is here. Um, there's lots of different kinds of blocks. The blue ones there are just initializing variables. The green ones are all um, listening for things that happen in the GUI like button clicks and so on. And the purple ones are procedures. Uh, here's an example of a procedure. This one is doing Gassman fluid substitution. Um, you know, it's a bit clunky because you have to use these blocks to kind of do your mathematical operations in pairs. Um, uh, so the operators all just have two terms. So you have to kind of build up your operations like this step by step. And then all each row there does is it sets up some kind of variable in blue uh, on the left there. And then um, when you get down to the bottom, it's starting to actually do the calculations. And there's all the usual tools you'd expect in a program with, um, you know, logic, um, for loops, while loops, um, all that kind of stuff. It's pretty, it's pretty powerful. 
Here's an example of the output. Uh, this one's doing AVO modeling. Um, there's on the left there is the view I get on my phone. You have your phone plugged in while you're developing, um, so you can see everything on the fly. As soon as you make a change, it happens on the phone. Um, alternatively, you can use the emulator, software emulator, which runs on your computer. So you don't even need an Android phone, actually, to do this stuff. You can just go run the emulator and you can start building apps right now. Um, interesting thing here on the left there is that graph. Of course, I was a bit stumped by how to draw a graph and not being a programmer. But um, Google, again, come to the rescue. They have this web API um, for charts. So all I have to do, actually, it turns out, is construct this rather horrible looking URL. And it only looks horrible because I'm drawing three curves there. So it's got the Aki Richards equation in there twice and the Shuey equation all encoded in that URL, which I just sent to Google. And they send me back, a instead of a web page, um, they're sending back a little chart, a, a, a PNG file back over the internet, which I can then display in my app. So I don't have to do any of that. Uh, chart drawing in the app itself, it all just happens online. It's extremely cool. Really cool is that companies like Opani are taking that sort of concept of a web API and saying, well, what if we make the server side really powerful by full on cloud computing, cloud storage, and we put MATLAB on there and we put Octave on there and R and Python, and then people can actually just run their scripts on any kind of device just through the internet and we'll run it on this, if you want, you can run it on a thousand processors. Uh, extremely powerful, basically putting a supercomputer um, anywhere you can get a browser. Very exciting stuff. And so, anyway, some of the things that we're doing, I guess, uh, aren't quite so grand, but yeah, we have some plans to uh, put some more of our cheat sheets into apps. I want to build a web API myself, just for fun, really, but um, want to deliver um, Synthetic gathers, which I think kind of could be kind of fun. Um, doing seismic attributes from photographs, I think could be interesting. Horizon attributes, you know, what does curvature look like if I run it on here? I think that might be an interesting learning tool for interpreters. Um, and yeah, there's some other ideas. I don't know how far we'll get with any of these, but uh, I'd love to hear what you think. Uh, if you want to be involved in any of this stuff, I'd you know be more than happy to. Um, have a go at open sourcing some of our software so that we could interact somehow. I don't know how that would work, but if anyone's really keen, I'm, I'm up for that. Um, just give me a shout. Um, and that's it. That's all I wanted to say. Uh, it's, we're having a blast building these uh, tools and just learning more about mobile and about programming even, dare I say it, such as it is in App Inventor. And um, so stay tuned. We put everything out on agilegeoscience.com. Uh, we have, you can click through to apps on that page to find out more about our apps. Um, all our apps have detailed help at agileinterpretation.com. You can go there and just uh, search for an app and it tells you all about the math in there and so on. And that's it. So thanks very much for listening and I hope to talk to you again sometime.